Today we're going to be looking at lesson 2-3, solving more complex equations. And our targets are to solve complex equations with variables on both sides and justify each step in the solution process. We're also going to write and solve equations to model real-world situations. We have a math tip that if an equation includes the product of a number and an expression in parentheses, you can simplify by applying the distributive property, where Whatever is on the outside of the parentheses, you multiply times everything inside the parentheses. That's a very important tip because eventually you're going to want to go backwards and take things that are being multiplied together and pull them into outside of a new parentheses that you'll make. Some equations require multiple steps to solve them efficiently. Now we've been doing a little bit of this so far. Today we're just going to continue on, and some of them might get just like a couple of steps longer, but as long as you follow your steps and show your work, you should not miss anything due to careless errors. The equation 3x minus 2 times x plus 3 equals 5 minus 2x is solved on the table below. Complete the table by stating a property or providing an explanation for each step. So we just want to be able to look at this table and explain what they did each step, or ideally you'll be able to say what property they used. So let's look at the first step. Right here, they went from 2 times x plus 3 to 2x minus 6. So we know that they used the distributive property. Or you could have said that they multiplied what's on the outside of the parentheses times what's inside of it. Next, it looks like they went from 3x minus 2x to just x, which is combining like terms. They then added 2x to this side, left side and added 2x to the right side, which would be the addition property of equality. As we always say, whatever you do with one side, you have to do to the other to keep it even and balanced. They again, x plus 2x is 3x. They combined like terms, 2x, negative 2x plus 2x is 0. Find like terms. Three x minus six plus six equals five plus six. They wanted to get rid of the minus six by adding six to both sides. Addition property of equality. They said negative six plus six is zero. It went away. 5 plus 6 is 11, combine like terms. I then wanted to get rid of the 3 in front of the x, the coefficient, and so they divided both sides by 3, or the division property of equality. This right here, I ignore this. This is a mistake in the program for some reason. It took me a minute to figure out what that was. Just ignore that. We ended with a division property of equality right here. And 11 divided by 3 is going to be 3 and 2 thirds when you make it a mixed number in from an improper fraction. Let's look at number two. Solving the following equations and stating the property of equality or provide an explanation for each step. I want you to try these 
A, B, C, and D. When you're ready to move on, let's go to number three. Modeling with mathematics. Bags of granola cost $2 more than bags of apple granola. The owner of a restaurant ordered six bags of maple granola and five bags of apple granola. The total cost of the order was $56. Let M represent the cost of a bag of maple granola. Write an expression for the six bags of maple granola. So the expression for this is going to be 6 times M. Use the variable M to write an expression for the cost of apple granola. Well, maple granola is $2 more than apple. So we're going the other way. We want to know the cost of apple granola. It'll be $2 less than maple. So M minus 2. Write an expression for the cost of five bags of granola, apple granola this time. So it's five times M minus two, which we found was the cost of apple granola. Five M minus two. Write an equation to show the cost of six bags of maple granola and five bags of apple granola was $56. Well, let's see. We know that six bags of maple granola is six times M, and plus the five bags of apple granola, which is five times M minus two, and that is going to be $56. Six bags of maple granola, Five bags of apple canola equals fifty-six dollars. And then solve our equation to find the cost of each type of bag of granola. So we have six M plus five M minus two equals fifty-six. We will distribute six plus 5m minus 5 times 2 is 10, negative 10 because it's 5 times negative 2 basically. Remember, the minus signs are the same as negative signs. This is either m minus 2 or you could write m plus negative 2. We have to get used to that kind of thing. Equals 56. Combining like terms, 6m and 5m is 11m minus 10 equals 56. Bring our 10, we want to get rid of it by bringing it to the other side by adding 10 to both sides. This side will go away because negative 10 plus 10 is 0. And 56 plus 10 will be 66. We will divide both sides by 11 to get rid of the coefficient here. The being, since it's the opposite of multiplying times 11, 11 m, 11 times m, the opposite is dividing by 11, and both sides will keep it balanced and equal. 11 divided by 11 is 1, 1 m. 66 divided by 11 is 6. There we go. A maple granola is going to cost six dollars while a bag of apple granola will cost I need Miss Taylor and Miss Vince to come to the office please. Minus two. Six minus two which will be four dollars. Let's try and then I'll let you do 6 through 13.
On number four, suppose you're asked to solve this equation. 3 fourths x minus 2 thirds equals 1 sixth x. What number could you multiply times both sides of the equation so that the numbers in the problem are integers and not fractions? Well, we look at 4, 3, and 6 as our denominators, and we want to multiply everything to get rid of that fraction. So it has to be a multiple of 4, 3, and 6. So let's try 12. 12 is a multiple of 4 and a multiple of 3 and a multiple of 6. So if we say 12 times 3x over 4, which is the same thing as 3 fourths of an x. It's just harder to write that than type it like this on this program. Minus 12 times 2 divided by 3, which is that fraction. Remember, we're keeping it equal. We're multiplying everything by the same term in order to keep it balanced. And then 12 times 1x, or basically x over 6, is another way to write that. So, 12 times 3 fourths will be 9x minus 12 times 2 thirds will be 8, which will equal 12 times 1 6, which is 2 x. I actually kind of got into the groove a little bit too much doing this problem because all they asked was what number can we multiply times both sides so that the numbers are integers and not fractions. It's 12. 12 could be multiplied times both sides. What properties allow us to do this? Well, the multiplication property of equality would be one. And number five, explain how the commutative property of addition could help you solve this problem. It would let us move the terms around. Remember, terms are what you call each individual piece of the expression. It would let us move the terms around to better identify like terms. Or common terms would be another way to say it. I wrote both just in case. Like or common. Alright, go ahead and try 6 through 13.